Yeah, thanks for coming to my live uh, sculpting demo. My name is Damien. I've been a character artist for the past six years full time. Um, I currently work as lead character artist for Ecosoft, which are a uh, medium small game developer based in Germany, most known for uh, a game series called the X Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sculpt the human head. Uh, we are going to do a Caucasian male and um, the focus is going to be on how to create attractive features on your characters and um, how to avoid some common uh, mistakes that as especially beginners tend to make when they sculpt faces. So we don't have a lot of time for a full face. So let's just jump into it right away. Um, when I sculpt, can you still hear me? Okay. <laughs> So we start with the sphere and I just use the, the grab brush to quickly establish my overall proportions. Um, the head is around one uh, point times, 1 1.5 times as, as uh, tall as it is wide. Um, and I just create something that looks a bit similar to a, a motorcycle helmet um, to capture the overall form and, and silhouette of the, of the head. One thing that uh, especially people who are very new often forget is that when you look at the head from below, uh, from, from above, you've got this taper towards the front, so it's widest right behind the ear. And um, it's important to uh, always look at, look at your sculpt from, from different angles and make sure that it works from everywhere because, of course, this is 3D and we can't just uh, fake perspectives. So we've got something that loosely resembles the, the overall shape of the head. I'm careful, like overall, I'm not caring too much at, at what this looks like, but I'm already being pretty careful with my jawline. And then we can add a, uh, a cylinder, which we then scale up to make it a little bit taller on the Z axis and then scale it down to the uh, proportions we're working with here. And then uh, I'm going to rotate that about 15 degrees on the y-axis and move it down a little bit. So that's going to be our neck. I add a loop cut that I then uh, rotate. That's important the, because I'm going to extrude the, the shoulders now. Um, All right. Um, and the, the neck doesn't sit on the shoulders like horizontally. Uh, it comes out of the shoulders at an angle. And uh, so it's important to have that here immediately when we, when we start. Uh, keyboard layout is different to what I'm used to, so bear with me for a little bit. And then I just add another loop cut here that I move forward a little bit to um, capture that curvature of the neck a little bit. And then we go in, we add another cylinder. And this one is going to be our ear. We just squish that. There are other ways of, uh, of doing that. Uh, you could just mask out the side of the head and then uh, add, add the ear that way by just pulling it out, for example. Um, I just like working with these uh, primitives in the in the early stages and that way I can um, establish the the overall volumes that I need for example like with this ear I don't care too much again what it looks like um, but just having it in place helps me already contextualize the the shape of the skull a little bit better uh, so right now when I tried to put it in place, I realized that the jawline was still a little bit off. So I can just go into the, into the skull and just adjust that a little bit. Um, and the ear attaches approximately, the, the lower part it attaches where the, the base of the nose sits and the upper part is on the eye line. So right now it's probably a little bit high. Um, and then I just add a, add a mirror modifier to that and apply that and then I can ma merge all these objects together um, and then I can go into sculpt mode and then if I remesh I can um, 
weld them all into one solid geometry. Um, and then I'm going to start sculpting. Uh, I always start with the neck for two reasons. First of all, once again, it helps me contextualize what's going on with the jaw, with the head in general, but especially with the jawline. And also, if I don't do it directly, I tend to forget about it later on. Um, so the, the main forms that um, make up the shape for the neck are the trapezius muscle here in the back runs down up the, the back of the, the neck and uh, here down the shoulders and also on the back down between the shoulder blades. Um, I'm using a planes approach, so I basically just sketch in planes with my draw sharp brush and then I use a bunch of other brushes to refine what I did there. For example, a polish to maybe flatten out things a little bit um, get rid of some volume uh, or the clay brush a lot. Um, and here this muscle is called the sternocleidomastoid. Um, it becomes very, vis uh, very visible when you, when you turn your head. Um, just adjusting the overall proportions a bit now and then I'm going to use the um, clay brush to just refine these forms a little bit add some mass here below the jaw, um, some mass for the uh, Adam's apple, and then just refining that insertion a little bit. Uh, I don't need the neck to be super detailed. Um, I just want to have it blocked in, as I said, to contextualize things for myself. And so the, the end result looks a bit more finished. But in general, like with uh, since we only have 50 minutes for the sculpt, um, I tend to leave the the neck at a at a very rough block out stage, and this is pretty much already good enough. Um, I like for male characters to make the head almost as wide as the jaw, uh, because that tends to create a little more, bit more of an athletic look, which overall I think I'm I'm going for with this character. But I'm going to explain more about that later. Uh, and now that we've got the, the neck established, we can finally really start sculpting the face. Um, I start with establishing the eye line with my draw sharp brush, just so. Um, it sits vertically speaking in the center of the face. Uh, and then I just add uh, the brow line also with the draw sharp, just in alternate mode, then I can start establishing the frontal plane of my face. Uh, already put the, the chin in there a little bit. And then move things around a little bit on the y-axis because this uh, is still missing some of the complexity right now. Then I go in with the polish brush and just flatten things out. Um, this is a similar approach to something like the Asaro head or, or what you would find in anatomy books like Anatomy for Sculptors. Um, and this approach for me person, personally uh, helps a lot because it visualizes things very well and it helps my eyes read what's going on a little bit. So I start out with very simplified sharp forms and then slowly I, uh, I just make them more complex as the, the sculpt develops and at like uh, later when I, when I decrease the voxel density and we have some more topology, I can then go in and um, create more of the secondary forms. Right now I need to adjust the portion, uh, proportions a bit because my face is way too wide, especially the jaw. Um, but yeah, as I said, uh, Faces are always seen in context, so you don't see single facial features. You see them in context with, with each other, which is why once you, once we add more of the of these planes here and establish more of the facial features, we can um, we can understand the the proportions and everything a little bit better, and we see uh, early mistakes maybe while I was moving around the. Uh, the clay a little bit, uh, we can see those a little bit better. And yeah, right now I'm just establishing the, the cheek area a little bit um, 
as well as defining the frontal plane a little bit, looking at it from different angles again. Like for example, right here, I'm interested in what my silhouette looks like. This is still a little difficult because I'm missing the mass for the, the mouth, basically. Um, and then I just go in here with my, with my clay brush, just add a bunch of, like, like make a clay strip, and then I can use my grab brush to adjust the shape of that nose that we just blocked in. And um, then I'll look at it from below. As I said, always look at your sculpts from different angles, and I can widen the base of the nose. And when you look at the nose from below, it kind of looks like this triangle with one side cut off. Um, and what's important is that the base of the nose isn't like completely straight like this. It comes out of the face at like this curvature uh, with the philtrum sitting right below that. And then I go in with a um, polished brush and I can just polish away some of the mass here and bring out a bit of the rest. And that way I can quickly uh, create like a loose obelisk shape that is going to be the main mass for my nose, which I can later carve out more of the secondary features from. Uh, and then I just establish the transition of the nose and the, the brow line a little bit more. Um, and yeah, now that I've got the nose, I'm going to put in the, the mouth mount, which is basically just all this tissue being, uh, being stretched over the teeth. Um, and I also look at that from below because uh, I need to be able to see what's happening with that curvature. And that way um, it helps me establish like a proper layering of, of tissue because we want to we wanna create the illusion when we sculpt that there is something going on underneath the skin. So it's important to uh, respect volumes like that are created, like for example, by the teeth in this case. Um, and at this stage, I like to just very roughly already block in the lips because it just helps me read that curvature. Once again, facial features contextualizing each other. Um, and I don't have the resolution yet to properly draw in the lips, but just doing this is already helpful for me to see uh, the shape of that arc and if it's coming out right. And then I can just pull the base of the, of the nose out a little bit more to get a more natural uh, shape in my upper lip when looking at it from, from the side. And right now, my face is kind of tilted upwards, so I'll just pull this down and back a little bit. And it's important to me to establish my proportions early on uh, you can always tweak them later, so, but since yeah, we only have 50 minutes, as mentioned multiple times already, um, I need things to, to go fast. I need everything to basically look right as quickly as possible before I move on. Because later on when I have more uh, topology here, every, every um, adjustment is going to be a little more tedious, a little more difficult because I've got more polygons to manip manipulate to uh, to get the desired result. So, yeah, I really try to get everything right here while still in this, uh, in this blocking stage. And, yeah, as I said, I, I mostly use the, the draw sharp to just draw in these, these lines and create my features um, and define these plane changes. And later, as the, the scope progresses, uh, I'm going to get more and more into um, more realistic forms that are a little bit softer uh, because right now when you've got the, the planes like this, things tend to look very stylized. So I'm looking at this right now from uh, a three-quarter view and I'm not really happy with, with how the cheek is uh, looking in the silhouette. And this is something I do a lot. I sculpt on this side of the face, but I'm actually looking here uh, seeing seeing what's happening on that side because I need uh, need to adjust my silhouette, but of course I can't sculpt very well here. And yeah, 
just need to add a bit more mass down here. Um, bring in my primary planes a little bit again with the draw sharp. And this is something I do throughout the sculpt whenever I lose them a little bit. I just bring them back quite heavily and then I can just uh, smooth things out whenever I need to, when, whenever things get too planar. All right. Um, I'm going to add some volume now for the eyes. So we have less of a skull look going on here. So I just add a UV sphere, which I add some rings to, uh, or rather increase the number of rings, um, just so I have a little more topology here to draw out the, the cornea, that, which is the, the lens that sits on top of the eye. Rotate this so the topology helps me more with that. And then I can just uh, grab this ring here, uh, move the cursor to it, and uh, maybe one further out. Uh, move the cur cursor to it, hide it, select this island, unhide, and then I can move this on the y-axis. Of course, I need to uh, use the cursor actually, otherwise snapping it there didn't do much. And then we can scale this down um, to the size of our eye. I just realized that I, uh, this is not going to be the eye itself. It's just going to be the, the main ma mass that sits over the, over the eye. So I didn't really need to add that uh, cornea yet, but I'm gonna end up just copying this so I can use it for the actual eyeball later. So this is going to be merged into uh, into the face and I had a mirror modifier so can, I can visualize things uh, a little bit better. Uh, move this on the y-axis a bit so I can see the, the eye spacing. And when you look at the eyeballs, um, proper eye spacing of the eyes themselves is supposed to be one width of the eye. So there should be a third eye fitting right in between. Uh, but the eyeballs are a little smaller than that so if you have if you, if you uh, imagine a third eye, it wouldn't quite touch the, the other two. Um, but since this isn't my actual eye, it's just uh, basically going to be the eyelid sitting on top of that. I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave it a little bit bigger, just place it about here before I can go back into, my, um, into the face itself and then just move things around duplicate this for my eyes later on and hide it uh, and then just uh, control J this together need to apply the mirror modifier so I don't lose the lose the eye we don't want that uh, and then if I go in and remesh things could have just pressed control R um, we get something that is a decent block out for the eye. Sometimes I just go in with the clay brush and put in this volume, but doing it, which is quicker, but doing it the way I did it right now saves me a bit more time down the line. Um, and I mentioned earlier that I wanna talk a bit about attractiveness and what makes for uh, attractive facial features. So I've um, established most of the forms now, at least in like a rough block out. So now I can talk about that a little bit more because I've got more of a visual representation. So um, there are people who conduct um, attractiveness research and most of what I'm gonna talk about comes from that. And this is carried out by, for example, uh, orthodont uh, or orthodontists, but also um, psychologists, for example. And I've just lost connection to the tablet. <laughs> Let me just try one. No, it's back. It's back. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, tablet's back. So, fingers crossed. Um, so, 
yeah, uh, facial attractiveness research. One, one concept that uh, comes from that is something called averageness. Averageness can be a bit of a misleading term because when we say averageness in that sense, we're not talking about an average looking person. We're talking about a person who has features that are averaged across the population, so no real outliers. To visualize that a little bit, you might have people with a very long nose like this in a population. You might have people with a very short nose like this in a population. And then if you average out the entire population, you get something like this. And if you do this, this for all facial features, for example, you might have people with, with very wide spaced eyes, uh, people with very close set eyes, and if you average that out across the population, you get something like this. And this creates a few proportion rules that we can use. For example, we want to have about equal facial thirds, uh, which means um, that from the bottom to the, of the chin to the bottom of the nose, from there to the brow line and from there to the hairline, not the top of the skull, but the hairline, uh, we want those to be equally uh, sized. Also, um, with male characters, we want the jaw ideally to be about 90 to 100 percent of the width of the cheekbones, which are the widest part of the face. Um, and the distance of the outer corner of the eyes is about the same as the distance from the brow to the mouth. Um, now, if we create a high averageness face, this is going to be a character that's quite good looking, quite pleasing to look at. But they're going to have, because by definition, uh, their face lacks any outstanding features, they're also going to look quite forgettable and boring. So what we need to do is we need to diverge uh, from that average a little bit. And we need to do so in an educated manner so we get desirable features on our character. Um, and there are multiple ways to do this. Um, the way I'm going to focus on today, because it's uh, something that's a good starting point and, and not too hard to explain uh, within the time frame that we have is uh, sexual dimorphism. So um, features that differ between uh, men and women. So if you're uh, creating a male character, you can um, make features a little bit more masculine. And if you create a female character, you can make things a little bit more feminine. So uh, some very dimorphic areas would be the brow line, the jaw, the nose, and by just uh, making those a bit more uh, sexually dimorphic, you can create a more striking, more interesting looking character. Um, I've established the overall proportions pretty well right now, so I think uh, we can go on and um, incre uh, decrease the, the voxel density to create some more topology. Um, the rule of thumb there is to always use as uh, small a poly count as you can get away with at the stage you're sculpting at. Um, beginner sculptors tend to have way, way, way too many polygons and then the, the mesh becomes very difficult to control, very lumpy. And then when you smooth things out, you might smooth it out too aggressively and then you get rid of all the facial features you've spent a lot of time trying to develop. Um, so you can really help yourself out by uh, leaving the poly count a bit lower for as long as you can manage. And now I'm just going to go in and start refining more of my secondary forms. Um, once again, just using the draw sharp to draw in the, the lines. And um, then I, I add some clay to it once I'm happy with the, with the planes that I've created. And then with the clay brush, I can make things just look a bit more, uh, a bit more fleshy, a bit more natural. And um, then I can also use the smooth brush to do that a little bit. But as I said before, we need to be careful when smoothing our mesh because with the smooth, it's very easy to just completely destroy your forms. And you see right here, I'm just smoothing on one form at a time. I never go from like across multiple forms with my smooth brush. Of course, now I also smooth very heavily, but I, I don't do this. I stay here, smooth this a little bit, then I go here and smooth over there. Um, and now I can put in my nostril. When you look at the nose from below, the nostrils tend to be closer together 
in the front than they are in the at the base of, of the nose and they're pretty much a little bit bean shaped like this so you've got these two little beams facing each other and that creates the the shape for the nostril don't want the base uh, the 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 wing of the nostril to be too thick which right now it is so i'm just going to bring in this plane again and then i can uh, polish things a little bit and maybe take out some of the mass here all right then i pull this down a little bit because ideally you want the, the angle of the nose here at the bottom to be about 90 degrees And then I can just create a bit more of a taper. And right now, our the tip of our nose is a little bit too thick, so I can adjust that somewhat. And then I'm just adjusting the silhouette a little bit, making that a bit cleaner before going in here with the polish and just adding some more mass to this area. So we've got the nasal labial fold here, which kind of runs down the face in this circular pattern around the mouth. Um, we don't want to define that too much because uh, then we tend to age our characters. Of course, if you if you want to create an older, older character, that's, that's what you want to do. But right now, uh, I'm not looking to do that. So um, yeah, some forms you just have to be quite careful with as I draw in the lips. Um, I've created the philtrum here, which is this kind of U-shaped uh, fold that runs down from the um, nose to the uh, lips. And then the upper lip curve is almost like this Batman logo with the little U-shape in the middle and then these arcs here. And then the line in, the, in between the lips where they meet kind of mirrors that shape, but the curve is a little bit flatter. Uh, and the U-shape is a bit wider, so we have this kind of gest gesture going on. Um, and then I look at it from below again to make sure my curvature is still working well. Uh, looking at, at it from the side, I want my uh, the corner of the lips to line up with the eyeballs. So I'm going to pull it back a little bit more. And then um, for now... I'm pretty happy with the, with the lips themselves. The mouth still looks a bit off. Uh, it kind of looks a bit beak-like, maybe like a botched lip top. Um, and that's something you all often see in beginner sculpts. And the reason for that is that there's a lot of tissue around the lips that is still missing. So I'll just go in with uh, the clay brush and add that. Um, so it's important that the lips tuck into the corner of the mouth here. There's, there are quite a few muscle insertions that move the lips and they all insert in this point, or a lot of them do at least. Um, and that creates this, this bulge here, which uh, having that creates a bit more of a natural uh, shape in the lips. You can see that this is already a bit better. Um, coming in with my draw sharp again and establishing these uh, these forms a little bit more. And then you've got this volume here at the uh, below the lips, which kind of um, moves out and back. And you've got this, these two convex shapes here and then the, the concave shape in the middle. And I'm just going to pull this back a little bit because otherwise when I look at it from three quarters, um, this silhouette is very straight and that's not what I'm, I'm looking for. So I'll just move this back and then refine this form a little bit more. And then I'm going to... Uh, zoom out a little bit in a moment and look a bit more at the uh, larger features overall proportions i think uh, i saw earlier that from the um, 
side view, from the profile view, the face is still a little bit off. So I want the forehead to be a bit more, uh, a bit more vertical. So I just move the the skull forwards a little bit, and maybe I will move the the mouth back a bit as well as the nose. Uh, we don't want the mid face to protrude so much like this. Um, we also don't want it to be too flat in a Caucasian person. Uh, if we were sculpting an Asian person, that would be a little bit different. They tend to have flatter mid faces, wider cheek cheekbones. Um, and now that I've touched on ethnicity, I also want to mention that a lot of what I'm talking about regarding attractiveness is based in Western beauty standards. Uh, other cultures prefer other features. Uh, for example, um, I talked about this quite square jawline, but if you look at, um, for example, K-pop culture, um, they tend to have, uh, K-pop singers tend to have these very oval jaw shapes, um, which is just because that's uh, more the beauty standard in, in Eastern Asian countries. Um, but yeah, beauty standards are a bit tricky because uh, in some, some uh, other cultures, um, they tend to, to also use Western beauty standards a little bit because of colonialism, which is, of course, a tricky issue. I'm not going to touch on that now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can just uh, adjust the mass of the uh, cheek area a little bit. Uh, basically flatten things out with the clay brush a bit, adjust my volumes. Um, I still need a bit more mass here at the end, the masseter muscle, which is the, the large chewing mass muscle here in the, in the side of the mouth, because when I look at it from three quarters, uh, I want this to be not as aggressive on the same uh, token. I can also just take away a bit of the cheekbone here and then define that plane a bit better. Um, yeah, smooth things out a little bit to get some more uh, natural features. But yeah, overall, I think this is looking pretty decent. I'm gonna add like another little plane in here because we don't want the jawline to be too sharp because it's not just the uh, bone that creates the jawline. It's also the tissue that sits on top of it like all the muscle especially here in the back with the masseter muscle that I mentioned already And then I don't want this fold to run too deep So I'm going to fill that in a little bit to create some more mass here at the bottom of my off my of my jaw and sometimes even at this like um, higher uh, poly count, I like to just come in with my uh, draw sharp brush quite ag uh, aggressively and just uh, draw in these lines and smooth them out. Basically find my, my primary forms again because I tend to find that these lines I established in the beginning that run down the face here, um, they are very important if you want a person to look attractive, which has something to do with facial leanness, which is another important factor when it comes to attractiveness. Um, but once again, averageness is important. Uh, you usually don't want your characters to look too lean. Um, otherwise, you get something like, like what they do in the modeling industry, which is a pretty sickly look and doesn't look healthy. Um, so I go for more of a healthy uh, leanness level, uh, maybe uh, skewing it towards athletic a little bit. Um, and then I think we should work on the forehead a little bit more, especially with men, you've got these um, large protrusions here created by the brow. And then we can add some more complexity to these um, to these planes. I wish I had more time to really go into detail with the, with the planes I'm creating, but unfortunately uh, there's, there's just not enough time for that. So I can't explain every single 
something that I am sculpting, but if you want to know more about it, I'm going to be walking around here until tomorrow afternoon, and uh, I'll be happy to talk to anyone who's interested in this. Now I'm just going to refine the features here a little bit. Um, and I, I, I've i been wondering for a long time when I started sculpting um, how, to, how to make a person look attractive. And I um, there, there are a lot of resources that help me create more realistic looking faces. For example, this planes approach that I'm using right now. But what that didn't really help me with was, all right, so I want, I want this character for my portfolio to look really good. I want them to be very eye-catching. Um, it didn't really help me with that. So yeah, diving into all this attractiveness research has helped me with that, get a better understanding of, um, of what features I actually want to create in my characters because we all have an instinctive knowledge of, of what looks attractive, because when we look at an, at an attractive person, of course, that is somewhat uh, um, subjective, but when we see an attractive person, we usually know it, but maybe we can't, exp can't explain what makes them uh, look attractive. So as artists, uh, analyzing that and, and then making more educated uh, decisions with our sculpts can be very helpful. Um, right now, when I look at it from this perspective, I can see here on this side the OG curve, which is what you call this curve right here, is very pronounced, um, which is not really what I'm going for right now. There are people who look like that, but it creates this very hollow cheek look, which is not what I'm trying to do right now. So I'm just going to uh, create some more mass in this area. And once again, I'm just going to bring back this plane and um, just doing that helps me visualize what's happening quite a lot. And often when doing these one hour sculpts, because I've done a few of them in preparation for this talk, um, just doing that was already enough to fix my issues, if I, whatever they were, because often the, just that the planes weren't as defined anymore was, the, was already the problem. Um, and even if that's not the case, just having them in there again simplifies the shapes and helps me troubleshoot what's going on maybe with uh, proportion or other things. All right. Um, I'm going to start working on the eyes in just a moment. Still want to just define the cheeks a little bit better. and then maybe add some more curvature to the lips because right now they are very, very straight. Uh, some things we're not touching on today in uh, regards to attractiveness are um, things like skin health. Uh, healthy looking, clean looking skin is, is a big health indicator and, and makes people more attractive. But uh, that's not something that we need to concern ourselves in this stage because now we're just sculpting. Um, and the other thing is uh, symmetry. Since we have a button for that, we don't really need to worry about it. Um, what I do want to say about symmetry, though, is that when you have perfect symmetry, like 100% symmetrical, like we created right here, um, that that tends to look um, a bit artificial. So at the end of, uh, of the sculpt, we usually want to break that symmetry a little bit. Um, and if you do that, you can, uh, you shouldn't just, just do it randomly. You can do things like uh, use the symmetry to create a slight resting facial expression. So you could do something like tuck up one corner of the mouth a little bit to give your character a bit of a smirk. Uh, and that helps us also like convey more personality for our character and things like that. Because at the end of the day, um, 
as character artists, we are also storytellers, and we want to uh, tell people certain things about about our character uh, in regards to uh, by by how they look. Of course, uh, that can also be used to. Um, all right, wrong box voxel size. <laughs> Uh, I tend to, like, I know you can adjust the uh, voxel size also with the shortcut, but I tend to not use it because I'm not as precise with it as uh, when I just type it in. So usually I then just end up typing it in anyway. Um, regarding the eyes, as I said before, we want the eye width, uh, the eye spacing to be the same as the width of the eyes themselves. Um, right now they are protruding a bit much, so I'm actually going to move the uh, eyeball back a bit on the y-axis before coming in here and then doing the same thing just with the grab brush. Making sure that I've got the right curvature and then going to fill this in. I'm going to check how much time I still have got left because we started a few minutes late. Okay, I didn't start a timer. <laughs> um, whoop. So for the, the male eye, I like to go for this kind of squinny look. And that's simply uh, because Brad Pitt has got eyes like that and that dude is gorgeous. <laughs> And of course, that's a bit of a joke, but um, that touches on something else I wanted to mention, which is uh, reference. Of course, reference for artists is very important. So if you want to sculpt um, attractive looking characters, you need to look at attractive looking people. And there are certainly uh, worse examples for that than, than Brad Pitt. Um, and that touches on something else. Of course, right now I'm not using reference. I don't have the time to, to be looking at things while I'm also explaining to you what I'm doing. Um, but ideally, of course, if you create a character, you want to be using reference. And also some other things that I'm doing that maybe aren't ideal is if you want to create, with stylized characters, it's a little bit different. But if you want to create um, realistic looking faces, the forms are very subtle. And to get subtle forms, it's very helpful to um, use a smaller brush with a weaker strength and then just building your forms up very carefully and slowly and that way you get a lot of a lot of subtlety baked right into them from the start um, but yeah once again I only have 50 minutes so I have to brute force it and do broad strokes to get results quickly I feel like right now my eyes are probably a bit too small. So I'm uh, just going to clear my mass and just pull on them a little bit to make them bigger. Um, and ideally, I would want to have a bit more time to adjust them. But I think we are about to run out in a few minutes, uh, which is also why I've started talking and explaining what I'm doing a bit, yeah, a bit less because I need to focus on getting this eye area right. And the eye area um, is very, very subtle. And that makes, uh, makes it quite tricky because often there are small things in there that are off and that just makes the whole eye area look very weird. Um, and sometimes it's not even, if you've, if you've got something like that, it's not even the area of the scope that you're, uh, that you're working on itself. It might be something like the surrounding features having having wrong proportions because as i said in the beginning uh faces uh facial features don't exist in isolation they all exist in context with each other so facial harmony is very important um, you can have people that divert very strongly from this average but they still the the averageness that i talked about earlier but they still look super attractive uh, just because they've got great facial harmony and that's things like, for example, if you've got a very wide jaw, but you've also got the cheekbones to match, that's better than 
uh, for example, having very wide cheekbones and a very narrow jaw uh, because it just works better together. Or um, if, you're, if your eyes are, if you've got a longer face, um, larger eyes tend to look better because they, they uh, make up for that uh, proportion a little bit. Yeah. Of course, uh, beauty is a bit of a tricky subject. Uh, I try to focus on it mainly just in an art sense. Um, regarding like the, the, the characters that I work on. Um, but yes, yeah, studying that has, has made me come across a lot of superficial stuff about looks and a lot of this facial research is used to tell people what kind of facial surgeries they should get to look better and so some really toxic stuff. So when you, if you, if you decide to look more into facial attractiveness, be aware that there is a lot of uh, very weird shit on the internet. <laughs> All right. Um, just going to adjust this a little bit. Um, I'm going to also quickly put in my eyebrows um, because we are used to looking at people with eyebrows all day long. People without eyebrows are quite rare. Uh, rare. So seeing them really helps us read the face a little bit better. Just put in some of these squiggles right here to basically suggest that there's hair. And then once I've got those, I maybe can adjust the, the brow line a little bit more. Um, some things I didn't talk about regarding the eyes. Um, there's something called candle tilt, which refers to the angle between the inner and outer corner of the eye. Ideally, the outer corner of the eye would be eight degrees higher than the inner corner. So what you can do when you do a sculpt is you can put in a uh, a model in here, maybe a plane or an edge, and you can just rotate it eight degrees and use that as a, a reference if you want to go for these idealized proportions and angles. Um, and also there's something called scleral show, which means that the sclera, the white part of the eye, is visible below the iris. And um, ideally there is no scleral show, but it is a very common thing. Most people have scleral show, so it's also not a, uh, a deal breaker. And lastly, I want to say that we don't need to make all our characters super attractive. Um, it can be helpful when you have like a main character and you really want to make, make them stand out. But um, I think there, there are tons of ways to make characters look interesting. Uh, without just adhering to these perfect beauty guidelines. Um, they can just, these guidelines can just be helpful um, to understand uh, facial attractiveness a little bit better, to um, create a baseline from which then you can diverge. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid to, to give your characters flaws because uh, ultimately, that's what makes people interesting. Um, but being able to sculpt a perfect character really helps with then um, when you add flaws, doing it in a very controlled way and in a very educated way uh, and using those to maybe say certain things about your character. Like if you add a scar, you can tell a lot of history and things like that. So, um, do I still have time or? Okay. Then what I also like to do is I usually like to sketch in some hair just because um, guys with hair tend to be more attractive. I'm sorry. Um, so I measure up my facial thirds with my finger to find the hairline and then I can just sketch that in and Ideally, men have a square or M-shaped hairline, uh, while women usually have more of a rounded hairline like this, uh, very broadly speaking. So I go for this uh, slight M-shape, but pretty squarish, and then I can just come in with, a, with an aggressive clay brush and just create these strands. I'm gonna do like just a 
swap back hair star right now because I can do that in symmetry and it's a bit quicker but basically I just add a bit of volume here and of course uh, with hair you want to do that as a separate object ideally just doing it in, in the sculpt immediately for time reasons and if you do character for production you're also going to do hair cards or curves or whatever but having a clay block out for your hair can be very helpful in finding where you want to place the, the cards especially if you put uh, a little more time into it than I'm doing right now and you already use the the clay to really define the direction of your strands um, this is a lot faster than placing cards so it helps a lot with iteration uh, on, on the hairstyle uh, and that can can make it much easier than to place cards or curves however you want and uh, yeah I think this is pretty much it this is all we have time for sadly we didn't get to do the ears uh, but I hope you enjoyed the presentation I hope you learned something and if you've got any questions or you just want to chat I'll be walking around here don't uh, hesitate to come up to me and yeah, let's have a chat. Thank you very much. Enjoy the conference.